Hey everyone, I'm going to talk about how stoicism and philosophy played such a big part into my sensory motor OCD recovery. This was a request from someone in the comments in the below. So when, when I make videos, I always tell people, you know, make comments, ask questions, uh, give us recommendations on topics you'd like to see. I will show you the view of where I am at, at the end of this video. It is basically fr freezing outside and I'm probably gonna freeze my my ass off in the middle of this video because it's so damn cold so I'm gonna talk about uh, just how much changing my perspectives through stoicism helped massively with sensory motor OCD but before I go any further please subscribe hit that like button comment down below like I said give recommendations on videos different aspects of sensory motor now Sensory motor goes all the way through the big five, blinking, breathing, swallowing, salivating, and your heartbeat, all the way down to bladder urgency, all the way down to the bridge of your nose, skin, the way things feel in your skin, anything where there's a sensation. Now, when we talk about sensory motor OCD, most people are talking about it from the bodily functions, hence the big five, such as the breathing and blinking. But sensory motor OCD can also be visceral stuff as well. Um, tongue position uh, uh, or visceral as organ, but like anything in, in that regard, bladder's a big one, location of body parts, hyper-awareness of the way your body moves almost in an existential way. So I want to go over the number one most important thing when it comes to sensory motor recovery, and I'm going to put this up because it's that cold, and that is the belief itself. Now let's look at stoicism and what stoicism really means not the modern day stoicism where people are kind of using it using it in a wishy-washy term stoicism in the most basic principle is a preparation for death in my opinion it is a way to look at life in its most blunt realistic manner that life really is quite short and there's lots of suffering involved and you can't really escape that suffering. The more you think you can escape that suffering, whether it's mental escape through rumination, uh, whether it's outward avoidance behaviors, the bigger problems you're going to set for yourself long term. Short term, you're going to have the relief you're looking for in many cases. But the further on you go in your recovery with, well, not your recovery, but in your OCD fears and you do more and more avoidance behaviors and more and more um, Distraction methods, that short-term relief gives you much less relief than it usually did. So it is very important to cover that, you know, becomes a means to its end. So again, being a preparation for death, looking at life again in the most brutal sense is that the perspectives that we take on things in our life dictate our emotional consequences. The premise of Albert Ellis's ABCDEs a being activating event, your sensation, breathing, blinking, swallowing, salivating, heartbeat, the belief system, the irrational belief such as if I notice these sensations for the rest of my life, my life is ruined, and see the emotional consequences such as depression, anger, rage, self-downing, chronic shame, chronic guilt, extreme hyper-awareness because you're adding a secondary belief. Um, you're hyper-aware of your breathing, and then you hate being hyper-aware of your breathing, so then you start self-downing yourself, and you have secondary um, uh, tertiary belief systems, and that can go on forever and ever and ever, and it kind of spirals out of control where the main belief system is the fear of noticing the sensation for the rest of your life. Now, Marcus Aurelius, who was ruler of Rome from 161 AD to 180 AD, he had a very unique way of looking at life. He had a technique called negative visualization. And what negative visualization is, is in my opinion, a very optimal way to look at your life. And that is looking at life through the lens of the realities, through skepticism and realism of what you'll more than likely go through. Now, the reason why people take this and they twist it in an incorrect way is because they go, I don't want to start my day off as negative. And whilst this is an understandable perspective, it's also more than likely a utopia uh, I don't want to use the word toxic, but toxic positivity, which is everywhere. You know, people always be happy, always smile. I was listening to a podcast not that long ago where people are like, you should smile more. That means nothing. Humans don't smile all the time. They're rarely smiling. And that doesn't mean anything. So these are just irrational beliefs that humans hold, smiling being one of them. Just because you don't smile doesn't mean anything about your emotional disturbance. You could be very calm and internal peace and never smile. It, these, are just, uh, these are just illusions that people make up in their life 
to give uh, illusionary context and meaning to the existence that we hold, which is more than likely universally meaningless, in, in my opinion. Um, and the meaning that we that we have from life is the meaning that we assign to it, our own personal values. Um, but th it's very easy to break down. Like a universal principle when it comes to sensory motor OCD is, if I know this is for the rest of my life, my life is ruined. And many humans hold, if I'm not comfortable, my life is ruined. If I don't know the meaning of life, my life is ruined. But this is an irrational belief because no one knows the meaning of life and the universal principle. And you could ask a hundred different people from a hundred different cultures and a hundred different backgrounds to get a hundred different answers. It's, it's very easy to break down. It's, these are easy concepts to break down. Um, they're scary to break down because people hold these concepts so strongly and they don't like going against things that they've always known or think they've known because change is very scary for people because it, it is accompanied by extreme discomfort feelings. So when it comes to the sensory motor cycle, you need to look at things, you don't need to, but you would highly benefit yourself by looking at it from a very plain reality. There are no rules that say that you, your person, we'll use me, Nick, should not be hyper aware, depersonalized, derealization, uh, cannot be emotionally suffering. There's no rules. I could highly prefer that, but the more I say that this should not be this way and it's not fair, the more I'm moving against objective reality. And moving against objective reality is a problem because it creates, um, it creates delusion in the sense of you are setting yourself up for emotional disturbance because you're looking at life in a, in a way that's not realistic. It's not realism. It's utopiaism. It's it's just blind optimism. And that's the way that most people are living their lives right now, which is fine to an extent until something goes wrong. And as most people who live a long life, things will go wrong. They'll lose loved ones. They'll get in a car accidents. They'll lose jobs. They'll go through recessions, potentially depressions economically. They'll have social injustices. Uh, th there'll be a plethora of problems. There are more problems to solve than not solve in life. Daily problems, large problems, micro problems, macroeconomic problems, financial problems, uh, uh, social unease problems. So, so people will more than likely have to spend the majority of their life facing discomfort and solving problems. OCD was just a problem that I needed to solve and not solve in an OCD sense where you're like, you guys talk about not solving. I mean, it. I needed to put the tools in order in order to see relief. So I had to change my belief systems. Those beliefs are if I notice these sensations for the rest of my life, my life is ruined. I must be present. I've talked about this many times. The present moment is illusionary to many, many people. We have many books out there talking about the the the, the power of the present. But the, the present is strong, but the present is not something that can be forced any more than sleep. sleep. The best sleep are people that have no sleep routines, at least people that don't hold them very rigidly. I have sleep routines. I like a colder room. I like I like certain aspects of certain pillows and stuff, but I don't need those things at all. Um, I would prefer them, but I don't 100% need them. And this is the difference between demanding, shooting, and musting versus the preferences, the strong preferences that you can hold in the realistic perspective. The other reason that stoicism is so important for breaking down a sensation-based fear is realizing that life is simply not fair, nor do you deserve recovery. Now, this video is a little bit more blunt than I usually do, but the person did ask for it, and I think it is important for you to see where I'm coming from because I have recovered from sensory motor OCD. I've had many different sensation-based fears, so I know quite quite well what kept me stuck. We're not going into avoidance behaviors here or compulsive behaviors. I'm strictly talking about a philosophical perspective through stoicism. So again, back to that, I want to circle back to that negative visualization. So when you look at life for what it is, and this is a quote from Albert Ellis from his book, How to Control Your Anxiety Before It Controls You, a mixture of optimal happiness comes from optimism mixed with realism mixed with skepticism. If someone is going throughout their life and they're not skeptic skeptical at all and they're not being realistic, they're more than likely setting themselves up for a world of hurt at some point in their life emotionally because they're looking at life in a very unrealistic manner, which I see time and time again, anecdotally from my own personal experience and working with hundreds if not thousands of different people through OCD recovery and seeing that it's you are allowing the door of 
a false reality to come swooping in and knock you off your fucking feet. It's not going to knock you, just knock you off your feet. It's going to push you off this cliff right here. It's going to push you right down because life is not easy. Uh, I know social media makes it out to be that so, so many people have these easy lives. They're not. Lots of illusion, lots of lies going on, lots of um, false realities going on. Uh, take a travel show for an example, right? You look at someone and go, oh my God, they're so happy. People probably don't even know each other. They probably don't even like each other. And they're probably very conditional and they crave acceptance all the time. So there's a lot more going on behind scenes than we see. So stoicism has been the most important thing for my sensation-based journey because I had to realize that I'm just not, I, I don't deserve anything. And I, that's okay. I don't deserve to be respected by people. I don't deserve for people to like me. I don't deserve to feel good. That doesn't mean I don't put the work in. Humans right now are have lots of weak qualities. They're not weak people but they have weak qualities. And a lot of it is unknown, it's, it's unknown to them because of they've been fed this constant comfort illusion of needing to feel a certain way at all times. And that is a major problem. So hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, again, breaking down the fears of, you know, I don't need to feel, not feel sensations. I don't need to recover is so key. Um, again, comment down below. Let me know what you think, especially the person who requested this video. Uh, I like doing philosophical videos. I think they're very important. Um, this is why I like hiking. I think about philosophy a lot when I'm hiking. And again, if you're interested in our webinar and coaching services, please email info at ocdrecovery.com. I can certainly help you on your sensory motor recovery journey. And again, this is breathing, blinking, swallowing, salivating, your heartbeat, the bladder sensations, any type of chronic shame, chronic guilt, uh, anger sensations, any type of sensation that you're trying to run from. <laughs> Woo specifically depersonalization and derealization. And uh, I can really help you with that, show you how to break things down that can go a long way. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, have a great day.